Let's say good morning to our co-host on the day, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. Great to be here. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and a delightfully happy New Year. Well, that's right. This would be your first co-host. Yeah, in, it was. Uh, back from the Christmas break. But I have been listening to you. Well, yesterday. I wish you'd yesterday, listen more closely. But I, but I tried to listen during the week, and you weren't there. It was just a black nothingness. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people feel that way. <laughs> At times, Bill, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it was nice to have that week off. It was. Yeah, yeah it really was. It yeah. was great. And yeah. uh, we got back yesterday. It's a short week uh, this week because uh, Monday was New Year's Day. So we appreciate everybody uh, joining back in with us after the break and being back here as we get back to uh, normal broadcasting week. And I noticed that uh, John and Matt and you did not miss a beat. You picked up exactly where you left off in this black hole of nothing <laughs> <laughs> i don't know where that's coming from bill but is, we, did something happen you want to talk to me about are you okay <laughs> yeah among the many many friends here on air <laughs> so, no i did enjoy the show yesterday you folks are good i uh, appreciate you being here and this was an interview uh and by the way in the nine o'clock hour today former sheriff nate Harmon will join us that's for a full hour at 8.35, the Speaker of the House of Delegates in West Virginia, as they begin a, a new session January the 6th, Roger Hanshaw will join us at 8.35. But before we get into the heavier stuff of the day, I wanted to begin with some lighter stuff for the day. And we tried to get this interview before Christmas, but uh, this fellow was booked up pretty solid because, well, he is Santa Claus. He is Santa <laughs> Santa Claus. Santa Claus is pretty busy before uh, Christmas. So I didn't want to give up on the interview because uh, I thought this would be a, a nice uh, way to, uh, to usher in the new year. John Johnson is the author of Simply St. Nick, and uh, he wrote a book about my life as a real-life Christian Santa Claus. John, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us today. Great to have you. Well, Oh, hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, we're it's back good to you. be with you. It's great to have you. You are a West Virginian, correct? I absolutely am. I was born in Charleston, and uh, my wife and I lived for many, many years in the town of St. Albans, right outside of Charleston. I grew up in Tornado. That was a whirlwind childhood. Um, I always like to tell everybody that. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it is yeah, very funny. West Virginian all the way, though, yes, I I don't currently live there. I'm down here on the, in the Grand Strand area of, of South Carolina, which, mm -hmm. well, I mean, let's just put it where it is. It's a it's a colony of West Virginia. So there we go. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, you know what? Santa Claus deserves a vacation after a pretty busy week. How about that? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and it has been a busy season. Probably enough stories through this past season to make another book. Is this the first book you've written? This is the first one that I've actually written. Yes. Tell me about your life as a real-life Christian Santa Claus and what that means. Well, I tell you, you know, as a Christian, um, you know, my, my portrayal of Santa is, is heavily um, impacted by, uh, you know, my faith, as, as well as the example of St. Nicholas. Um, I take it very seriously. It is more of a ministry than it is anything else. And uh, I've spent a long time doing it. This past season has been, this was my 40th year uh, putting on the suit. 40 so, years. How did you begin doing this, John? Well, in the first grade, I was asked by my first grade teacher, Mrs. Hudson, to uh, play Santa Claus in the, in the school pageant. And it was uh, a rendition of The Night Before Christmas. And uh, little Johnny was supposed to come out and, and just, you know, lay a finger aside of his nose and give a nod and, and then leave the stage. Well, little Johnny couldn't do that. Little Johnny had to ho, 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 Merry Christmas to everybody. And, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I had to be the ham of the show, but uh, my mother made my suit out of, uh, red flannel. I had a cotton ball beard. <laughs> nice. The first child on my knee was my baby sister. So, uh, yeah. That's how it was done. And as an adult, your portrayal of Santa Claus morphed into more uh, of a uh, of a fuller-sized version. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Where did, um, where did you do most of your Santa Clausing? Most of my Santa Clausing, my goodness, I've done a lot of Santa Clausing through the Canal Valley, uh, even all the way up to New Martinsville. I've done photo studios across West Virginia. I've done house visits. I mean, run the gamut. I've done parades, been on stage, um, 
my goodness, I did a version of Miracle on 34th Street at the Alban Arts Center in St. Albans. Uh, a lot of different things that I've done throughout the years. And uh, my, my wife's favorite uh, visits, because she would often go with me on these, were, uh, you know, hospital visits, hosp- hospice visits, uh, retirement homes, things like that. And, uh, yeah, seen a lot of things and have a lot of stories to tell. <laughs> and why was this the right time? to put it all into a book? Well, I, I kept having uh, people say, you know, you need to put these down. You need to write these down. You need to tell these stories and, and let people know what it's like. And uh, so I buckled down and, and did it. What have you learned about people being Santa Claus? People are, in a lot of respects, the same. Um, they, they love, they want to be loved. They they want that special interaction, and at Christmas time, um, there's no better time to give that. And Santa Claus, you know, is it, all about love when it's done right. And um, as a as a faith based Santa Claus, um, I feel it's doubly so because I'm able to really talk to them on a level where they understand the, the greatest gift of Christmas. And um, yeah, so that's that's one of the one of the lessons I've learned. <laughs> Bill, yeah, uh, should I call you Nick, or do I, should I say Saint Nick, or can I just say John? You can say John, or you can say Nick. You can say Santa. You can say Father Christmas. <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> There's a whole litany <laughs> in there. Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, congratulations. I would think that'd be a very fun thing to do. I've uh, I've had acquaintances uh, that have done the same thing, but certainly not on the same scale that you have. Uh, But all of them say that the best time of the year for them is playing Santa Claus. Do you feel that after doing this for 40 something years, do you still get a lot of excitement every time you put on the, uh, uh, the, the red suit? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I still get butterflies before, uh, before, uh, uh, we'll say uh, an engagement. Um, uh, let's see. I spent uh, my season this past season uh, actually sending a Bass Pro in, in West Virginia or in uh, Myrtle Beach here. I'm sorry. And uh, every day uh, before I would step out, the, the little butterflies and stuff. Which, which you know, if you have the butterflies, it means something to you. And uh, yeah, every day. And the the amount of love and and the amount of joy. You know, when a child looks up at you, and they, you see that 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 full trust in their eyes, and they're telling you their absolute uh, secrets. You know, that's a that's a heady thing. That really is, and it's a, a special thing, and it's a sacred thing. There's a sacred space there, and. Um, you know, for to be entrusted with that, that's a, that's a big thing. So it's, it's a very serious thing for me, as well as something that I enjoy. It's, it's I, I do. I, I fully enjoy it. After, after doing this 40 years, I would suspect there'd be some, uh, uh, some inclination on your part to make changes. Uh, would the changes be more toward the traditional Santa that we all envisioned as we were kids, or is there a more contemporary Santa that you try to make certain changes to, uh, to adhere to? Really? Um, I'm very traditional with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you know, I want somebody that's that's 90 years old to have the same type of experience as somebody that is, you know, a, a newborn would have. You know, I want that because I see that whole gambit of life. And and children really, they don't change all that much. The one thing that that I have noticed uh, that that has changed has been the type of requests, as opposed to you know the Barbie doll and the electric train set and things like that, which I still get asked for. I'm asked for a lot of electronics, a lot of electronics. And, um, you know, a lot of times I'll say to you two of them, you know, I need to talk to a parent to make sure that, you know, because that's a responsibility thing. And Santa wants to make sure that you're responsible enough to take care of it. Mm -hmm. Um, But as far as as changing the overall character and things, no, no, I'm very traditional, and 
uh, I've maintained all the you know all the same things that people still write Santa letters. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, yeah, very old. Do they guy. do they get delivered to you, John? Uh, letters? Oh, I have so many letters that are given to me throughout the season. Uh, Christmas lists, uh, little uh, little notes with with what they want written down on them. Uh, pictures from coloring books where they uh, children will color color me a picture or draw me a picture. Um, I have a lot of things that I've collected over the years. Does the local post office bring you mail? If it's just no, no. But the funny thing about the about Santa letters, um, I used to work with the Secret Santa Foundation down in uh, Kanawha County and Boone County, and one of their big fundraisers was a letters from Santa program, and they would um, send out letters to hundreds of children but i sat and signed every one of those so they officially came from santa <laughs> very nice uh you have a santa voice a wonderful santa voice uh does that well, thank you. is that something you had when you were you played your first santa at six years of age uh probably not <laughs> <laughs> no, i hope not that would be frightening yeah, yeah. but yeah. is that something you cultivated or uh uh or it did it just come natural to you, this this wonderful, deep voice? Very natural. Very okay. natural. Yeah. Yeah. John Johnson I've is been, our guest. I've been an entertainer for, for years in regards to, you know, I used to play a lot of a lot of old-time music, things like that, and uh, spend some time on stage doing a lot of different things. And I just have the, uh, the, the register to do this, and uh, I, I have... Uh, as my wife says, I'm just loud in general. So, <laughs> what? <laughs> there you go. Do you find something difficult uh, playing Santa? Uh, something that you kind of dread, but you anticipate may may happen. Oh goodness! Um, some of the requests can be very difficult, and um, like for instance, um, there there's an instance in the book, as a matter of fact. Um, where uh, a, a young man asked me to bring his father back who had passed away three months before he visited me. Oh my. Um, I had a similar instance um, this year with sort of the same uh, request. Um, I've had children ask me a lot about death. And, I, and, and also I've had some adults come to me and ask me for, more time on earth they're they're suffering from cancer and they're they, there's a something that they want to see in the new year and uh I, I sometimes dread those things but but i'll tell you it's it's very interesting now john would kind of balk at an answer for that um or you know he he wouldn't know what to do but when i'm in the uh in the suit there there seems to be this um ability to to give an answer to a person and to comfort on a, on a greater level than what maybe you know plain old john might do and um Good yeah answer. sometimes yeah. i dread those and because i, I just wonder but but it, it there's a a um maybe it's my faith but i'm able to to answer the uh the call there when when they do come to me do those, they, those are hard times, and every now and then Santa has to, you know, take a little break yeah. after those. Yeah, I could well imagine. Uh, the awareness of the children. Uh, do you ever get question about uh, Santa bringing gifts to the children in, in the Ukraine or into Gaza or to Israel? Oh yes, okay. oh yes. A lot of children uh, have told me that that they're praying for for those uh, those folks, and also that they would rather have some of their presence go there. And I always, you know, tell them I'll do my best. I do my best. Never, I never promise, but I always do my best. Um, you know, the, those situations, uh, Santa is watching over those children just like he is everywhere else. And um, peace, you know, the, the whole message of Christmas, peace on earth, goodwill to men. We need, to, we need to remember that and embrace it in everything we do. We are. If you just tuned in, we are talking with John Johnson. He is the author of Simply Saint Nick. My life is a real-life Christian Santa Claus. He's been Santa Claus for 40 years and uh, got his start as a six-year-old in a class play. 
uh, at one time. Uh, John, uh, Bill brought up a point about current events and over 40 yeah. years going back into the early 80s. <laughs> excuse me. There's been a lot of different things that have taken place, and kind of right in the middle of that is 9 11. And I'm wondering if you can uh, go back and remember what that Christmas was like, uh, which was uh, just three and a half months after that tragic 9 uh, 11 date. 9 11 was a hard time in general. I can remember when all of that happened. My wife was working in Dunbar, West Virginia, and I was working an evening shift on, on 9 11. And I found out what was happening by her calling uh, just in tears. And uh, I can remember that day very well. Now, Christmas after that, um, children were, were concerned about things going on in the world. Um, and um, I feel like the community where we were from and where where I was working a lot, um, people people wanted Christmas. They they needed Christmas at that point. There was so much going on and so much grief that they were looking for joy. I, I do remember that, and that happens quite a bit when when great things like that happen. Challenging times happen. People look towards Christmas, and. Uh, but I will tell you something that happened this, this past year that really makes me think. I had a little, little fella come over and sit with me, and we were talking about Christmas in general, things like that. And I asked him what he wanted for Christmas, and he said, really, Santa, I can't think of anything. I, I got stuff all year long. I, I don't feel like I need anything. I said, well, I said, I, I understand that. It's, it's, a, it's very easy now to, to, um, you know, have things that we want throughout the rest of the year. I, I asked him, I said, tell me, do you think that Christmas is, is a little less special now because of that? And he thought, and he said, yeah, it is. So I'm wondering if we're not going into another crisis where instant gratification is, is a big problem. Um, you know, we've always needed Christmas in the past. We've, we've needed that time of, of love, hope, and joy. And um, I think we still do, whether we embrace it or not. It's another, another matter. But I, I, I still wonder if maybe we're not... Yeah, instant gratification is a big, a big problem, I believe. So, what was Christmas like during COVID for Santa Claus? Hard, very hard, very hard indeed. Um, for one thing, I ended up getting COVID on December twentieth, twenty twenty. So, I, right in the middle of it, uh, uh, Santa got COVID. I continued to do visits from home. Uh, a lot of it was, I think, I did four live appearances. Um, I had a face shield on at that point, but um, I did most of my stuff from the computer at home, and uh, people were um, setting up appointments with me, and I did it all virtually um, up until about the 20th of December, like I said. Now, the interesting thing about that time, I was uh, elected into the um, International Santa Claus Hall of Fame on December 22nd of that year, and... Uh, I can remember my friend Dutch Schrapp, uh, who wrote the foreword to my book, but he's also known as America's favorite Santa. He worked he worked for years on the Dunkin' Donuts parade in uh, Philadelphia. Anyways, he called and let me know what had happened, and I can remember um, on the phone saying, "Yay!" <laughs> <laughs> That's about all I could muster at that uh -huh. point because I was so sick. He said, "Well, we'll call you back afterwards after after you know you feel better." But, uh, how, but yeah, how did you get nominated, John? Year. How did you get nominated for the Hall of Fame? Well, I was nominated by my peers, as a matter of fact. Um, my wife actually did a letter campaign for me, and uh, you got all these all these letters together and things. But I was nominated by my peers, and and sure enough, uh, because of the the scope of my career, the the depth of my career, and uh, my bent to you know just try to make people's lives easier and better uh, they they inducted me into it i'm in there with edmund Gwynn, ed asner names you probably know mm -hmm. um yeah it's uh, and a lot of santas just like myself that are out there just trying to bring joy 
Yeah, Ed Asner from Elf. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, John has... Who, is a, who was a very nice man, as a matter of fact. I got to visit with him for a little bit and talk about Santa Claus. And and he uh, he gave me a, a little bit of advice that I'd already been following. It's nothing that I didn't know, but at the same time, to hear him say it was, was, was really uh, poignant. You always have to listen. Santa is an ear. And always be that ear for a child. And, and that, that's absolutely true that we are. Uh, Santas are, are to be an ear. And if they're not listening, then, then I kind of wonder, um, because Santa is an ear. John, through the years and looking at from mm-hmm. the mater- uh, material side of things, have there been one or two more outrageous requests made to you that, that you resonate with or, uh, or remember? Oh, my goodness. I, <laughs> I can tell you a, a few funny stories, as a matter of fact. They're, they're funny because they, they kind of are outrageous when it comes to, to Santa. Uh, I had a one little boy. I was doing the St. Albans Festival of Lights uh, down in St. Albans, and I was sitting there, and I, ha- I had a line backed up. And, and But as soon as I saw this little boy, I knew something was going to happen. And he jumped up on my knee. And he says, Santa, all I want for Christmas is a cheeseburger. <laughs> and he jumps down, and he starts heading for the door, and he turned around and looked at me, and he said, and don't forget the Pepsi. <laughs> and I stood up out of my chair, and I said, young man, you got to remember, Santa's a Coca-Cola man. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, he is. That's the official sponsorship soft drink yeah. of Santa Claus. <laughs> so... Anyways, that well, that's one good one. And I had a, a young lady on a house visit once ask me for a can of green beans, which her parents told me when she got up on Christmas morning and went under the tree, they had gone to Sam's Club and gotten the big industrial can of green beans. Oh, my. <laughs> About five pounds of green beans right there, buddy. There, there you go. go. Did they explain why they want green beans as opposed to Barbie doll? No, no there, there's no rhyme, no reason. I mean, and and it, they, they ask for these things just as matter-of-factly as, as a child would ask for a Barbie doll. <laughs> John, what's your favorite story from the book that you haven't had a chance to tell yet? Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, one of my, my favorite stories, because they're, they're all favorites. I mean, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's my life. So, you know, every, every, every minute of it has been, has been precious. And I hope will continue to be. But my wife and I were visiting a, a retirement home and a rehabilitation center in Hayes Valley, West Virginia. A friend of, of my wife's and mine, uh, she's passed now, a lady named Peggy Blake, uh, was living there. She was my wife's next-door neighbor for many years. So we were there visiting Peggy, and Peggy had taken us all around the facility. We visited with all the patients and and, and just, you know, made those, made their day. We were going back to the, to the front door, getting ready to leave when a nurse came up to us and said, Santa, Mrs. Claus, we have one patient that we would love for you to see. Now, he hasn't spoken in six months. He's had a stroke, and he's been quiet ever since. He hasn't spoken. Uh, as we were walking, I said, oh, absolutely. As we were walking towards the, towards the room, she explained to us that his wife was there every day, and she would sit and, and just be with him. But he hadn't spoken to her at all for six months, if you can imagine, six months not speaking. Well, we went into the room, and Mrs. Claus immediately went over to, uh, to, to the wife and, and started talking. And I noticed the the gentleman was was turned towards the towards the wall. He wasn't paying any attention at all to anybody coming in or going out. He, he was just sort of turned, but his hand was was out beside him. So I walked up and I put my hand in his and and just waited to see what would happen. Something just told me to do that. And he turned his head and looked at me. You know, like somebody would focus try to focus in on, on what, what's happened. He looked me up and down, and a big smile came across his face. And his first words in six months were, well, hello, Santa Claus. <laughs> and there wasn't a dry eye in the, in the house. I, uh, 
I, of course, talked to him for a few minutes. I said, I thought I'd come by and see and wish you a Merry Christmas. You've been a pretty good boy. And he, he just smiled at me, just smiled at me. And, uh, yeah, when, when we left the room, then Santa had his moment. But uh, That's wonderful. But, yeah, that, those, those types of things, they're not isolated events. And in the book, there's, there's several, several different things that have, that have happened. And all I can say is, you know, God, God is, it has been with me in a lot of these things because it's, it, it has been such a fantastic uh, adventure being Santa and trying to, trying to bring joy. And that's all I try to do. John, how do we find the book? Well, the book is published through Westbow Press, uh, which is a, a, an off of uh, Thomas Nelson and Zon Durbin Press, you know, the, the Bible publishers, it's mm-hmm. the Christian publishing now, uh, self-published. Uh, you can get it on their website, and you can also get it on Amazon, Simply St. Nick, My Life as a Real-Life Christian Santa Claus. And, uh, yeah, it's very easy to get. It's in uh, ebook form, uh, so anybody that has a Kindle, they can download it as well, hardback and, uh, of course, uh, the softback. Well, John, you have brought joy to us this morning. Thank you so very much. Well, thank you all for having me. I, I know I'm a little late. You know, Christmas has already been, but, um, you know, so it's nice for Santa to be able to say and do something after Christmas. <laughs> actually, actually, your timing is quite good. We started preparing for Christmas already for it's next it. year. <laughs> you, you could be a little early, too, 11 months and 21 well, that, days. There's nothing wrong with being know, early. I, I don't want to say anything, but the, yeah, there, there's uh, North Pole has already started prepping, so here we go. By the way, does, does your wife appear with you as Mrs. Claus on occasion? On occasion, she does. She likes to go with me to the to the more meaningful visits, as she says. You know, the hospices, the hospitals, mm-hmm. uh, the old folks' homes, like the, like the one that I just told you about. Very nice. She was there then. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. She's had uh, she's had her own health concerns over the years, so she's she's not been as as active, I think, sometimes as she's wanted to be with me. But um, you know, she went through cancer a few years ago, and she's. Uh, She's she's a trooper. She really is. But there is a Mrs. Claus dress up there in the closet. <laughs> well, all the best to you and Mrs. Claus, sir. Well, we certainly appreciate that. And I'll just go ahead and wish you a Merry Christmas now. All right. <laughs> Thank you kindly. <laughs> Thank you, Santa. Have a great day. Uh, you are absolutely welcome. Hey, if you keep it in your heart, it's Christmas every day. I, I sure agree, well. sir. The book is Simply St. Nick, uh, My Life as a Christian Santa Claus by John Johnson.